Hey, this is Kanan. Uh, welcome to Gear Talk Episode 1. Uh, today I want to make this video talking about my favorite camera of all time. Uh, that title might be a little misleading, but uh, it's about what I found to be my favorite camera. Um, and also, hopefully this kind of gives you guys information for those who are learning and wanting to get into photography, what to look for in a camera. So my favorite camera is this guy. Nope, this is not a DSLR, not a mirrorless, uh, nothing fancy. Is a point and shoot probably like 10 years ago, 10, 15, I don't even know how old it is. It was actually in my family, my family's first digital camera. Um, it's a whopping 3.2 megapixels. Uh, there's definitely a lot to be wanted from a camera like this. Uh, it even has an optical, really bad optical viewfinder, but it has a LCD screen. So this kind of dates uh, what year it is. I actually don't know which year it was made, but it was the first uh, digital camera that my family has had. Um, and the reason why it's my favorite camera is because this is the camera that got me interested in photography. Uh, I grew up really interested in uh, learning about photography and this was the first camera that I found uh, that had manual mode and that was one of the first things that I ran across was uh, when trying to learn photography was to learn about the exposure triangle and at that point no other camera in our household had the ability to control uh, these settings. So the exposure triangle includes uh, changing the shutter speed, ISO and aperture and this camera can do it. Um, uh, it's nothing fancy, it has a built-in lens, um, it has a 4 times zoom lens from 5.8 to 23.2 millimeters. have no clue what size the sensor is or what the 35mm uh, equivalent is, but this was the camera that I learned photography, um, and that's why it's my favorite, and I still keep it. It runs on AA batteries and an SD card. Um, I was able to learn how to manual focus. It was not the easiest interface to work with, but it did the job. Um, you can use these dials here uh, to toggle um, the aperture and shutter speed, the left and right. That's how you would change it. There's no rolly dial, nothing like that. Um, but yeah, this was my first camera uh, that let me explore uh, and try to control light and to create a pleasing image. Um, so if you're uh, entering 2021 uh, with a goal of wanting to learn photography, um, my tip for you for buying a camera is to look for something that has the M, the manual mode. A lot of cell phones actually uh, support that manual control as well. There's some there's some limitations to what the manual controls can be in some phones. Some are better than others. So uh, do your research and see what your phone uh, can do. That might, as itself, might be a good starting point of figuring out, uh, learning the basics of photography. Um, from then on, there's a bunch of questions that you can ask, starting with, most of all, what is your budget? Uh, how much are you willing to spend? Um, next, there's to consider what type of form factor you want. Uh, there are these point and shoots. There are much newer point and shoots that uh, have amazing manual control. Uh, I really like the Sony RX100 series, uh, which I'm recording with actually right now. Um, those are really great cameras. If you don't care about interchangeable lenses um, and you just want something that's super mobile, the Sony RX100 is awesome. Like any cameras from that series, I've had, I've only played with the Mark One and Mark Three, and I don't know what they're at now, Mark Seven or uh, Mark Eight. But those are great cameras. They aren't cheap, but uh, they take amazing photos and a, a good opportunity to use them um, to learn uh, different form factors to hybrids, um, like the Panasonic FZ series or the RX10s. Um, those are also very great cameras to um, just learn photography if you don't care about interchangeable lenses. If you want to expand, if one of the big things that you want to do is buy lenses that can do different artistic control for shallow depth of field or different perspectives, something with much wider angle or fisheye, then you would need to consider a mirrorless or DSLR. Um, so that is the second question you would need after budget is what type of form factor you want. Um, the third one 
is do you care about video or photo just photography alone? Um, that would help you make a decision on what type of camera you'll get. Uh, different cameras have different abilities and how serious you, you want to do photography and videography. For just for fun, for family, around the house, um, that doesn't warrant a different type of camera than if you're shooting it professionally and want to get into professional shooting. And I guess you have to frame it in what your goal is with photography, um, if you're just learning, um, and how far you want to deep dive into this world of technology and changing hardware. Like cameras, there's new cameras released every year and there's new features and every year it just gets better and better. So you need to ask yourself what you're expecting out of your camera and what you want to get out of it. If you're doing huge canvas prints for your uh, decoration at home or just printing 4x6 photos. Uh, a lot of cameras including your phones can print wonderful 4x6 photos. So that's another thing to ask yourself. And um, the fourth thing is if you want to buy new or used. Um, I've bought two new DSLRs uh, throughout my last eight years, I think, and the rest I've bought through Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace and been buying and selling and trying different gear. And the awesome thing about uh, photography is there's lots of people that are upgrading the gear, so if you don't need the top of the line um, camera, you can usually find a slightly older model in very good shape that people are just upgrading from and you can get an awesome deal from that. And I would totally recommend it. Uh, just, I would recommend also looking at videos of buying used gear though before you commit to buying a used one. There are things to learn to look out for and signs of wear and tear that you should keep in mind um, before buying a camera or photography gear used. But I digress, um, this video was mainly really about saying why this is my favorite camera and when you're considering buying a new camera, it doesn't really matter which camera you pick up. If you're really interested in learning, you can learn with whatever you have available to you. If right now it is your cell phone, there are some apps that you can download that allows you to have manual control over the shutter speed and aperture. There might be some limits to it, but if that's all you can do right now, that is a point to start to learn some basics of what changing aperture and shutter speed and ISO is doing and balancing that exposure triangle. Um, yeah, I think that is the biggest thing that you should consider in 2021. There's a million cameras. I wouldn't say, yeah, there's probably a million cameras at this point that you could buy from old film to the newest digital uh, mirrorless camera that you can buy. But at the end of the day, if you want to learn photography, it's about controlling light, which is uh, learning how to use manual. Um, you can buy a lot of these fancy cameras and if you keep it on automatic, sure you can take some nice photos, um, but you're not really unlocking the full potential of how much you're spending for those uh, cameras. Uh, you can surprisingly do a lot with what you have as long as you know what you're looking for. Uh, as a side note, um, I don't want to put any uh, negative words towards the kit lens. I started off with a Canon T1i with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens for the longest period of time, but some of the kit lenses, if you do buy a mirrorless or a DSLR, some of the mirrorless do limit um, your aperture and how much you can actually play and see at the shallow depth of field. Uh, that was one thing that I struggled with. Um, there are ways to work around it uh, for the kit lenses like the 18 to 55 and 18 to 135. If you go to the telephoto um, range of those lenses at 55 or 135, um, you can get some shallow depth of field um, using the w most wide open apertures at those focal lengths. Uh, and can you can get some really nice photos at those uh, settings. Um, but if you were to buy a camera body separately, I would most definitely recommend getting a Nifty 50. Uh, in Canon, there's a really cheap 50mm f1.8 that's like from $60 up to $150 new, I think. But it's a great lens to learn um, to see... Um, to really see the aperture control and what that does to light and the depth of field or what's in focus in the photo. Um, besides the kit lens, 
like there's nothing wrong with it but if you really want to get into the world of lenses and seeing the effects of shallow depth of field or the potential of what you can do um, I would recommend getting a nifty 50 or a, like a 35 millimeter um, yeah there's so much more to say about cameras but yeah at the end of the day find what you have at home see if there's a manual mode on that camera and try your best to learn the basics once you get a handle on the basics you can do a little bit more research about uh, where you want to go with photography and what camera you want to buy. Otherwise, you would just be looking at buying the greatest uh, camera out there and it, you could be spending a lot of money on camera and lenses and you might not be able to fully utilize them yet until you learn the basics anyways. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I wish you guys all a uh, new, happy new year. I guess it's January 1st in two days. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about my favorite camera and why. Uh, if you like uh, this channel, please like and subscribe. I This is the first episode for a gear talk. I'm just going to explain some of the things that I like I, and I use and what I like and don't like about them. And yeah, stay in tune for my channel for other videos. I try to, I'm trying to make some YouTube videos as a hobby. So have a great one.